Alongside Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. It's White Hoodie Day. Um, we do not collaborate on what we, we not, wear. We do not tell Tyler or Kristen. But though. this is a good sign for cohesion, we think, for what we expect from BYU men's and women's basketball today. Wins. On Elimination Friday. This is a five-seat outfit. And joining us now to discuss both of those matchups is our elite basketball analyst. All-time Ty, that's what you're calling the him? New nickname for Ty is All-time. All-time I'm just, uh, BYU's all-time leading scorer. All-time. He's just all-time Ty. Is that okay, man? I'm just disappointed I didn't get the, the invite for White Hoodie Day. <laughs> well, do a second league tournament, Ty, and then we'll get to that point. <laughs> right? First to one here, yeah, we'll there. get through it. Yeah, work up to it. All right, let's ask you the same question that Jeremy and I just discussed in our opening topic, which is which of the BYU teams do you feel like has the better matchup? Is it the women against Pepperdine, or do you like the men to show up and take care of business in a big way against Portland? Well, I do think the men are playing with a chip on their shoulder, and they're playing, you know, based on that San Francisco game, I think they're playing their best basketball right now, and that's what you want in March. But um, having said that, I think the women have the better matchup. I think Pepperdine is down there, their leading scorer, and only eight players available right now. I think the women are playing with a chip on their shoulder as well and have something to prove in this tournament. Um, had a tough loss to, to Pepperdine earlier in the year, and so I think I think I like their matchup a little better. Um, Portland, you know, makes 19 threes yesterday. You know, we, Jaron, we, we've talked about it. I mean, I think there's an advantage to playing those first, you know, those first 10 minutes. If you've already played a game, you know, maybe you're a little bit tired, but you're used to the arena, you're used to the environment. That takes a minute to get into the flow of stuff, and so. Um, I'm I'm a little nervous about that that Portland matchup, um, but uh, excited to to watch basketball. Nonetheless, it's March, man. And I should be clear, this is actually Ty's fourth WCC tournament, just first down here. Now yeah. that we're back in in the yeah, we've been we in are studio. we've been in Provo, and now we got the invite sure. here. The official broadcast capacity in stadium. In stadium, yeah. So yeah, we'll get your white hoodie by the end of the segment. <laughs> Can someone get that? Um, okay, <laughs> Portland. Moses Wood and Tyler Robinson, like we were talking about, they didn't play in matchup one. When you're scouting a team, when you're getting ready for that game in this gym, how different is that sort of approach given, hey, that first matchup, we almost have to throw away quite a bit of that film, right? Yeah, I, at this time of the year in March, it's all about heart and effort. and But you do talk about some of the storylines that are happening and guys that are that are hot right now, right? And none that are have more of a hot hand than Moses Wood and Tyler Robertson and Christian Sholin. I mean, those guys... Gorsito was pretty good, too. Gorsi, yeah, Gorsito was very tough. Uh, in transition, in the open court, you know, this will be interesting tonight. But I, I do think BYU defends the three-point line really well, and they're going to force Portland to do something else. And... Try and try and go inside and force them into tough twos. I mean, although BYU has been has been up and down a little bit, their defensive efficiency numbers and and metrics are all you know top 50 in the country. And and so the, the big question in my mind is, can BYU make shots and get in a rhythm offensively? I think Foos is going to be tough. They'll go to him early. Or they'll try to establish something inside against Christian Scholand. Um, but can they knock down mm. jumpers from the outside? Can they hit, you know, that sweet spot number for me is seven, eight, nine threes. If they can hit that, um, I think they they win this game by yeah, eight or nine points. Is seven enough? Seven threes would be enough for you? I think so. I mean, we've seen it over and over where BYU you know hits two or three threes they go two for 15 and just never get into a flow offensively tournament games for me are so much about momentum and you know because it's win or go home and whether you you talk about it or not you feel that pressure and you see that light at the end of your season and it for me, it's so much about just rhythm and momentum and, you know, seeing a couple of shots go through, through the rim just puts everyone at ease, gives everybody a little bit of confidence. And so I think even in the BYU players' mind, they're questioning. I know they've had a, a, a really great week of practice, but 
I think they their question in their mind is, yeah, can, can we see the ball go through the hoop? Mm. Can we get into a rhythm offensively? Because that's been just a question mark this year. Tyler Haas is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Which BYU player has to have a big game tonight for the Cougars to beat the Pilots? Yeah, I think that guy for me is Rudy Williams right now. I mean, he started last game, um, it had, a, had a great game. Uh, in most of the, the big BYU wins this year, Rudy has shown up and shown up in a big way. And I think he'll be an X factor tonight, uh, especially on offense, just being another scoring threat. I think his speed and quickness and his decisiveness offensively can can really hurt Portland. And, and also you know, relieve some pressure that I think Foose feels a lot. I mean, he, he sees a lot of attention inside, but if, if Rudy can get downhill and get to the basket and find a way to score, um, you know, 15 plus, like that will help everyone get into a rhythm, I think. Rudy's got to start tonight, right? Yeah, I think After so. After Saturday? I think so. Monday he came on the show and acted like he didn't want to, which uh, in the end doesn't really matter. They may force <laughs> like, him to, yeah. Hey, you were too good, we were too good. Because if he plays like Saturday, Gary's going to Monday. Uh, 21 points, 7 assists, didn't really turn it over, one turnover, I think. He was awesome. Mm -hmm. That was one of BYU's best performances, perhaps the best, as we talked about on Saturday. But if, if that version of Rudy shows up tonight, this, this could be a fun, uh, fun watch. No, I, I totally agree. I mean, starting out the year, you know, the turnover issue was, was a big thing specifically with Rudy. But he has turned a corner that way and is leading this group. And I think... I think he has a big game tonight. Um, I, I love his his scoring ability, but he's distributing the ball really, really well. I think he has 23 assists over the last three games or so and is just playing with a lot of confidence and composure, I think. And uh, if, if, he can, if he can play at that level, uh, everyone else will follow suit. And you know, I think another guy that, that comes to mind is Gideon George. Um, Gideon's a guy that, you know, we've seen him hit four or five threes in a game. If he can come in, he'll be there on the defensive end. He, he has such a big impact on that end of the floor. But he's going to get some open shots, especially if Rudy gets going. He's going to draw some attention. There's going to be some open shots there for, for Gideon uh, on, on the outside, and can he knock a few of those down? What is the key to a team like BYU who is playing against Portland, who's already acclimated with the gym, to come out and look like they're ready to play in the first five minutes. Mm -hmm. Because we hear, like, first five minutes of the game, first five minutes of the second half, those are two super critical junctures. So how does BYU get in the right mindset and get ready to be ready to go in the first five minutes against a team that shot super well the night before? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think for me it was always about – throwing that first punch, right, and, and expecting that it is going to be a dogfight. And, you know, listening to, to Pope and some of the coaches and players this week, they talked about practice being really salty. That's the word they use, is salty. And they, they, I'm sure, have felt uh, a little gypped by some of the, some of the conference awards. I mean, there, there's a lot of storylines that these guys can uh, use as a chip for their shoulder and, and uh, have something to prove coming into this tournament. Um, they should use all those things as motivation. And I think f for me, you come in and you've got to be, you've got to get yourself to a mindset and a level of like, figuratively, Jerem, throwing a, a, a first punch, right? <laughs> You've always been a fighter type. <laughs> but, but really, like, that's what Portland's going to do. You've played a game already. Like, you're used to those things. You can't be surprised by their effort and level of play. You've got to get yourself ready and uh, ready to go right from the beginning. And tournament's always a little bit weird. You know, there's things that are different in your warm-ups. And so... Um, you know, especially if you're the second game. BYU is the first game tonight. Right. Um, but so they'll have plenty of time. But you've got to find a way to get yourself on edge. Mm. And I think when when BYU is playing on edge, it it's a it's a much different team than when they're on their heels and and it feels like the punches just keep coming and coming. But uh, that will be something I look for in the first few minutes. And who would you use? 
You know, because Jeremy, you have talked about matchups like mm -hmm. personnel. Mm -hmm. Tyler, who would you use to defend Moses Wood and Tyler Robertson? Robertson's a yeah. huge point guard, okay, big physical dude, and Moses Wood's super long, but athletic and and likes to play beyond the arc. So, how, yeah. like, who are you defending those guys with? Yeah, I think it's Gideon George and Spencer Johnson, and and maybe you bring in you know a high energy guy like Richie Saunders off the bench to to throw in the mix there but you have to control those guys first from the three-point line you got to be there on the catch you can't let them get catch and shoot easy threes which I felt like happened with San Diego last night they just let those guys get in a rhythm offensively they lost them in transition you got to force those guys to put it on the floor mm -hmm. especially Moses Wood I think he's a guy that you can really be physical with um, and force him uh, to try and go finish in with, with Foos and Atiki and, um, and some of our bigs. But I think w with Robertson, um, he's, he's an interesting matchup. I mean, we talked about it yesterday, Jeremy. He is really physical and has lots of different parts to his game. Kind of reminds us a, of Luca. Dollar like, store Luca. Like, likes to play with his back to the basket. He can do that from 35 feet or mm -hmm. on the block. Um, just really skilled, deceptively quick. Um, but got to stay in front of him. But I think the, the biggest thing is just communicating in transition where those guys are all the time, but being there on the catch and, and forcing them into to tough two-point two shots. If it's like Louis Vuitton, Luca, perhaps it's like Kohl's. Dollar store's <laughs> mean. Like, hey, discounted but still quality for a second. <laughs> you're, you're, the, you're, like the, Luka you're like the 8-9 seed in the WCC. You're not like the high-end, you know, but he's a good player. Good player. Very Don't want good. that to be taken out of context there. Tyler, great to have you on the show, man. There's your full defensive breakdown right there. We'll make sure that That's the time gets defense passed off tomorrow. Time. That was a lot of defense. I played no, a that was good. Defense. Come on. A little is right. <laughs> <laughs> I had to stay on the floor. So Everyone's wow. got on. their role, you know. <laughs> this is our Tyler Haas here scoring 20 a game. Jeez. I'm just here to get 15. Sometimes I go for 20. Let's go. Okay, BYU.